So here it is, the video that's all about my electric skateboard. So if you've been following the channel or my social media, then you've probably seen a new electric longboard. I built it myself and I promised everyone that I'd make a video about it and how I built it, why I built it, and this is the video. So basically one of the main reasons that I built this board was to kind of get around campus. Uh, like today is a perfect example of why I really love this board. Uh, and one of the main reasons why I built it is because when traffic is really bad in the morning, it can be very unpredictable. Uh, I end up getting a like, parking you know, right when I should be at class. 8.26 and my class starts in 4 minutes and I have like a 10-12 minute walk ahead of me. It's times like these that I really wish I had a boosted board. <laughs> Man, getting around campus would be so quick. Uh, uh, you know, there's an, there's an easier and cheaper option. I, I could just leave 10 minutes earlier. However, the simplest option is not always the most fun option. This is definitely the most fun option. I've seen boosted boards around. I've seen them on campus. I've seen them on the internet, on YouTube. Um, just random places and I thought they were really cool. The idea of them is just awesome. So I did my research, I found their website and they are over a thousand dollars. So I'm like, damn, that's a lot of money. So I kind of just gave up on the idea. I've been riding a, a penny board around campus for a long time, a while. Since the beginning of college I've been riding on a penny board. And it's great, but like my campus is just not the best ground. So like the crack's really big and it just wasn't as quick as I wanted it to be. So I did the research, I spent two months learning how to build an electric lawn board and I figured it out and I built one. So I chose to build one instead of save up and buy a boost board, one, because the availability of a boost board is actually very limited. If you order one, especially the version twos, it'll take forever to get to your house. You will never, I mean, it'll take a long time. And two, they're more expensive. Like they're, I mean, they are great products and for what they do, they are worth the money. However, I felt like I could build one that was better for less. In my eyes, my board is better than Boosted Board. But for you, it may depend on what you value in a board itself. So, of course, top speed and range is the number one and two for me. So today is the day that I find the actual range of my board. I've had it for a little less than a month, and I've yet to actually charge it to 100 and ride it all the way until it dies. So today we're finding out how far can it go on a single charge. So I am stopping every once in a while to film things. Uh, that kind of simulates like, you know, you get to your destination, you stop a little bit, you're stopped at a red light, you know, whatever it is, kind of simulating stopping and letting your board take a break. I'm not gonna ride it completely 100% to zero without stopping. I'm gonna let it, you know, do its thing and kind of take it easy. Like, regular use. I'm not trying to like, Put it through its paces here. I'm just. I want to see regular use of uh, you know what it can do on a regular days of riding. So I just finished up riding my board around the park for I don't know about, about an hour or so, and I rode just about exactly 10 miles. So I feel like my board could go farther because I, I feel like I've taken it out, put seven miles on it, and my battery's only half empty. So. I don't know, maybe it's because it's super, super windy today and the wind was blowing right at me for a lot of it. I'm not sure, but I did hit a new top speed of 25.4 miles per hour. So I have officially uh, beat the boosted board's top speed and beat the boosted board's range. So yeah, this board will go about 10 miles, which is three miles more than the standard uh, range of the boosted board version two. They have extended battery versions coming out, but like the, it's just been delayed after delay and no one's gotten them yet, even the people who have bought them already. The top speed on this, actually, I had I have trouble actually getting my board to top speed because I can't even handle how fast it goes. The fastest I've been able to ride on this thing is 25.4 miles per hour, which I don't even know how I did that, but I can't ride it faster than that. Like My skill level, as far as right now, I haven't been able to go more. I know there's a little bit more on the throttle because I'm not 
pushing my board all the way right af as I get that fast, I have to start slowing down. So I know it'll go a little faster. The specs on this board should put it at about 27 miles per hour, which I have not been able to hit yet just because I'm me. But someone with more experience probably will be able to hit it. So the 25.4 mile per hour top speed is again about three and a half miles an hour faster than the version two of the boost board. There is some issues with this board. I'm not gonna lie, this board is not perfect. I made it myself. I, it was not designed by a bunch of engineers or whoever the hell made a boost board. So these are the things that are not better than a boosted board. For one, boosted board has an app, which is really awesome. It keeps track of your miles and all that, which I really wish I had. I really wish I knew how many miles I put on this board. I estimate around 100, 150 so far. Not that many, I've only had it like a month. Two, the charging situation for this board is a little ridiculous. This board consists of like three batteries. And for me, I have to charge each battery separately. And each battery takes about 45 minutes. The boosted boards charge fully in 45 minutes. So it takes mine a lot longer to charge. And the, the charging is just not, it's not good. Like it's not even not good. It's, it's pretty terrible. Like I have to open up, open up the case, take the batteries out, charge each one separately, huge pain in the ass. And I know I can fix that if I throw a battery management system in there, but I just haven't done the research on that yet, but that's coming. That's an upgrade to my board that'll be coming soon so that I won't have to, I'll be able to literally plug it into a wall just like a boosted board. So for now, that's definitely a huge issue with this board. So what do I suggest you do? Well, that's kind of up to you. Like if you want to do the research and design your own board and build it yourself, I completely recommend it. It's really fun and you learn a lot. However, if you don't want to mess with that and have to deal with learning and things going wrong and then just buy a boost board if you have the money they're awesome they're going to be more well built probably i would think depends how well you are at building boards but uh yeah if you have the money then you can get a boost board but if you don't have the money or you just don't want to spend the money or you just want the building experience then totally just build your own it's pretty awesome and you can build a faster and more powerful one than boosted board, so yeah. If anyone has any questions about the parts I used or how to build it, or if you just want advice on your own board, drop a comment below. I reply to every single comment I get. So drop a comment and I will totally answer you as soon as I can. If you're not subscribed yet, you totally should. There'll be definitely more videos about my board in the future. Uh, you should follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and that's basically my only social media. So all the links will be in the description below. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm.